Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Machine Builder, and today I have a pretty cool program to show you. Basically, this is a program for Bedrock Edition of Minecraft, preferably Windows 10 Edition, and it lets you export your builds as structures so that you can get them to generate in any Minecraft world. So let's get right into it. So to demonstrate this program, I'm going to build a little house. So we'll just do that. Okay, so here's the house. It's just a very basic little house here. So now that we've made the build that we want to export as a structure, you can then leave the world. So just save and quit. And then look at the world name. So remember this name. In my case, it's Structure Building World. Okay, so this is me while editing. Uh, I just realized I forgot to mention something that's kind of important. You can't actually add custom loot tables to chests yet. Or like any storage blocks uh, so chests don't keep their items item frames also don't keep their items bonuses don't uh, basically that kind of stuff doesn't stay mob spawners also don't work uh, I don't know why there's nothing I can do to fix that it's not supported yet by the structures just by Minecraft so we have to wait for Mojang to update that before I can update it and then once they do I will um, so yeah if you want custom loot tables though just make a custom block because the program supports custom blocks, so you can just put the block in your structure and then give it a loot table so when you break it, it drops the items. So yeah, enjoy the rest of the video. And then open up the program, download link will be in the description somewhere. So just run it, and then it might take a little bit to load, but once it loads, eventually, there we are. You'll see some text on the screen, and then you'll see this text document open. It's the license document. You should probably read through this before you actually use the program, just so you know. It says here you may not copy, claim, redistribute, or edit this program without permission. So here we are. And it also provides download sources. So once you've read through that, you then type true here in the program and press enter. Now it'll tell you you've agreed to the license and then the program will open. And the license is over here if you want to read through it again. But anyway, you select your world, so this should be in order from newest worlds, open last should be at the top, so your world should be at the top of this list. If it's not in this list, you click browse files, and then go to where your Minecraft worlds are, so it's in your com.mojang folder, Minecraft worlds, and then here are the worlds. So this is my newest one, so I click here, and then press select folder, and now it opens the world, and then you can press load world into memory. Once that happens, you should be able to check here, and over here that's fine, that's just because I haven't actually loaded in this world, but if I were to load this world, select it, load world, it should tell you complete in the console here, it should tell you complete twice. So I'll leave that there, and now over here we've selected the world, we've loaded it, and this is the starting area of the world. So if we move over to where I built the little house, which was somewhere around here. There we are. It's down. Here is the house. By the way, you can middle click on this image here to jump to those coordinates. So if you want to move to the top corner of the house, you just click there, bottom corner obviously, all that stuff. And then to select your region, you left click up on the, one of the corners and then right click on the other corner opposite corner of the structure and then it can select it and you'll see yellow outlines and to zoom in you press the down arrow here so change the preview size to lower and then that's how you zoom in and if you want to zoom out you can press the up arrow here and you can zoom out all the way to 64 but you probably shouldn't do that because that lags and then also you can jump to coordinates if you type in coordinates here so x y z so if I were to jump to the center of the world again which is zero, 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 it's right here. But now if we just go back to where we were. Okay, so here's the house we have selected. And once you've selected this region, you can then go into this preview over here. And you can again middle click to jump up in the Y direction and also use this to zoom in. And then you just left click the top block of your build and then right click the bottom block and it will then select this area. 
and you can see what's selected from here so you know what you're doing and it'll tell you the coordinate region you selected so it's from this coordinate to this coordinate that's the area then you switch to the export tab over here and that'll tell you the selected region and then you can select the biomes that your structure will spawn in so first set your name of the structure so i'm going to call this small house and there we go and i'm going to also tick save blocks to palette just to make it better i'll explain that later but here are the biome tags of every biome in the minecraft game obviously so if you want to make your structure spawn say on the beach you click beach you click add over here well this is if you add custom biomes so you click beach click add and this one to add it to the spawnable biomes if you want to remove it just click it here click remove or you can also click remove all that will add all so if you add all it adds everything from here to here you can then remove all and you can also add them separately like this but we don't want that you can also do presets so things that i've made that you can just set up so if you want it to spawn on the land just overworld on land add preset it adds in these two things into spawnables and also removes these so the spawnable biomes are where your structure can spawn and the blacklisted are where it can't spawn so we don't want the structure to spawn in lakes oceans or rivers so it's not in the water and it will only be on the land which is overworld and overworld generation so if you want to spawn on like a mushroom island though you would again click here click add if you have custom biomes like i don't know say a biome called dragons you would then click add here so you type in the name and then click add and now over here it's here in this list and if you want to remove it i think you just do this click remove yeah you select it from here and then press remove you can't remove the default ones but you can remove custom ones so if you were to add this in and then you can press remove and now it's gone so that's how you handle custom biomes but we want it to spawn in the overworld on land so add preset there we are you can also donate with paypal subscribe on youtube and visit my website with the buttons below but that doesn't matter and then you can also select generate all four rotations which means the program will rotate the structure that you built um, for every direction so you have one facing north east south and west uh, if your structure is symmetrical though in two directions in like one axis then you should only generate two rotations because two of them are going to be the same so if it's symmetrical do that if it's like in symmetrical asymmetrical you do this you do four rotations this one doesn't matter we'll get to this later so now we have this this should all be set up correctly now I can head over to spawn placement setup check it to spawn on surface we'll get to these later and these don't matter because we're setting it to spawn on surface those only actually affect anything if you select the different things here you can also change the percentage chance that your structure will spawn in a chunk so for every single chunk this is how likely it is to spawn so if we were to set it to one percent then it would spawn one every hundred chunks 0.5 percent one every 200 and you get the idea but i want it to spawn five percent chance so now it's pretty common so we should be able to see it in the world make sure to generate all four rotations in this case you might not want to if you're making a big structure because big structures have more files but anyway you can do that if you want and then this bit doesn't matter we'll do that later maybe so now that we've selected all this just hit generate json files and you can see here it's generating okay so i'm editing again and i realized i forgot something again uh, it's this structure offset kind of system so if you want like i don't know say like a fossil to spawn like half in the ground you would change the offset of the y value to like minus three so it will spawn three blocks down from where it would have and that's how you kind of move your structure down into the ground or something or if you want it to be offset in any direction you can just type in numbers here and that's the xyz offsets so that's how that bit works
and then you can just export it as normal and it'll just be offset by these values. So that's it. Again, enjoy the rest of the video. Sorry for all these little cut in bits, but yeah. And now it's complete. So if we go to the location of the file of the program here, it generated two new folders. And when you run it, it generates a bunch of files and stuff. And these are the renders and previews. But over here, if we get the output, in output, just take every single file. So just cut them all from here and then put them into features in your behavior pack. So in a behavior pack, you have your manifest features, feature rules and pack icon. So paste into features. There we are, so this is every file that the program generated now in features. And then we're gonna go over here to the output underscore rules folder and take everything from here and then put it into this fold of your behavior pack and then feature rules. So there we go, now it's in here. And that means it's ready. So if I just create a new world, I'm gonna call it generate instructions, creative, show coordinates, experimental gameplay has to be on for this. Keep inventory, this doesn't matter, but experimental gameplay must be on. Otherwise it will not work. So now I'm gonna turn on my generating structures. There we are. So this pack, uh, the warning doesn't matter. But this pack is this one here. So it's this. So now that this is ready, you can then make sure experimental gameplay is on. Sometimes it turns off by itself. I don't know why that happens, but it's on. Press create. Okay, so the world just loaded in. There we are. Okay, cool. You can already see we have a bunch of structures everywhere. So here's one. It spawns how you'd expect. Everything here. The bed, the door. Everything spawns normally. I don't know what this thing is about though. There's a weird hitbox here. I don't know what that is. Anyway, so the world generates with the structures that you have selected based on the biome that you set. So it's all here. This torch is a bit odd. I'll fix that so the release won't have that glitch there. So that's how you make something generate on the land. And now if you want something to generate underground, like a dungeon or like a custom room, then I'll show you how to do that now. So over here we have the house that we made. And now if you want a dungeon underground, just go ahead and build your dungeon. Okay, so here's my little dungeon room. It's complete. So if we go in, it's just two fences, an iron block, and a bunch of air inside. So now we can close it up. And then we can leave the world. And then we can open up the program. And over here, we don't need it running. But if it was running, you can still use it from here and just reselect your area. But I'm going to close it and restart. So over here we don't need those folders either. So now we run the exe file from here. It's going to load up again. And there we go. It's loading. And now it's ready. So we're going to select our world. And load it into memory. Select your region. And I built the house and the dungeon together. So down here. Perfect. So we just click here, left click on one of the corners and right click on the other corner. And you can see that I missed a block in the preview. Um, it doesn't render all the blocks, so it's a bit weird sometimes, but I know I placed in more walls up and down here. So I click here right click here, select the region, 
and now you can change to export and I want it to export in the world just on land add preset there we are and now set it to spawn underground and I want it to spawn at minimum height y12 and maximum height y50 so it will spawn somewhere underground spawn chance we're going to make this 25% just so we can find it easily changes to dungeon demo and we don't need any rotations because it's perfectly symmetrical I'm gonna save box to palette as well and now when you're using palettes it just makes it easier it exports less files so to load the palette so you save box to the palette and then load palette you click browse for pack you then go to your behavior packs folder which is in here and then your behavior pack and then you click here so you get your behavior pack which is genstruct select folder and then load palette into memory it's loaded the palette so now it's all ready um, that's fine don't worry about what it did it's just doing stuff and now you can include air blocks for a dungeon because underground you want the air inside you don't want it to be filled with stone and now you can click generate JSON files and it's done we have the output which again we copy into our features and you can just paste it alongside the other files it doesn't matter and then take your output rules and paste it into here so now it's ready that is it we can go into our other world here we are so this is our generating structure world and you won't be able to see anything because they're underground but they also won't be spawning in areas we've already generated so we have to go far away so this is I'm going to go to Z. I'm just going to TP 300 blocks away. And now go down to find the dungeon. So it should be generating around here. So if we just grab out our torch, here's one. And you can see it generates with the iron block here. Uh, it also has some iron in the wall. Don't know why that is. It's fine. But as you can see, there's probably going to be some more without emeralds. I'm not sure where the rest are. Here's one. There we are. You can see they do generate underground. Uh, you'll want it to be less frequent than this, though this is basically everywhere you're gonna constantly be walking into these dungeons and they're not even dungeons so anyway if we just go back to the surface there we are cool so you can see dungeons work as well you can make your own custom dungeons so now we're gonna make a sky island so something that floats in the sky. So there we are. Just load into a structure world. Again, I'm just going to close the program. There we go. And we're going to build our island. Okay, so here's the island. It's just a very small thing. Just sort of here. With a tree on top, four torches. Again, pretty small, but you get the idea. You can make it as big as you want, but this is just a demo. So I'm gonna write down these coordinates just so I can import them into the program so I know where it is. And when you load into a world with the program, you have to make sure you've left the world, otherwise it won't load and it'll probably give you an error. But anyway, select the world, load it into memory, and now select your region, and then you can enter the coordinates here so negative 60 and then for the Z negative 70 and then Y4 probably going to raise that up a bit there we go so I'm going to select the region so again 
left click on any of the corners can be this corner and then right click on the opposite corner can, you can left click down here if you want right click up here anywhere as long as it's opposites and then left click anywhere down here along the y-axis and right click anywhere up here so now it shows you the area we selected and then you can go to export again I want it to generate just in the overworld anywhere so I'm going to add the overworld preset things the biome tag for the overworld it will generate anywhere not just on land because it's going to be in the sky so it doesn't matter and now spawn placement we want it to spawn in sky and then for the minimum height in the sky I want it to spawn above 130 and below 220 so it's going to spawn in the region between 130 and 220 in the sky there we are common um, maybe three percent per chunk we don't need any rotations because again it's completely symmetrical in both axes so I'm going to call this sky island and we don't need to include air blocks we don't need to align to chunk we can save blocks though so again I'm just going to import my pack here select folder load palette and now it's ready don't worry about that again but it's good practice to do it if you have a lot of structures because it will save a few files so now generate and it's done again take your output put it into your features there we are and then take your rules and put it into feature rules now if we go back into this world and close the program you should see islands in the sky so it's perfect they're spawning and they even have snow on them because they are very high where the temperature is cold or maybe they're in a snowy biome yep this one generated like this because this half chunk was already loaded because i had this area loaded before if you load it to a new world this won't happen so you don't have to worry about this there we are so we can now leave the world because we know that works and now if you want a kind of more in-depth look at the program uh, stay if you don't that's basically all you need the download links in the description like and subscribe if you liked it and I will upload more videos soon but thank you for watching okay so if you want a more in-depth tutorial now you stayed for this bit so this is going to show uh, like I'm going to try explain what different parts of the program do so over here we select our world load into memory currently we're in the world though so it won't load a preview so you've got to get out of the world So here's what the program does. So if we just load the world again, here we are. Okay. So this preview is a top-down view of your world. Um, it's only a selection of blocks that I added manually. I had to write all this by hand. Um, so up here, this is your Z axis across here. Your X is across here. The cursor points to the center position. And don't spam click here because then it will like have to update over a few frames and then it will kind of move off center so when you're clicking to navigate make sure you click once and then wait for it to load and then you can click again so if you just click once it works fine and again not everything shows in the preview but if you know where your structure is then you'll be fine so you can select an area that you want or stuff like that you can again zoom in with this bit and you can zoom out really far you can turn off the auto update which means if you move the preview it won't actually update anywhere which you don't really want you want it to auto update so if we turn off auto update and change the coordinates a bunch so i have no idea where this is but we then can press update viewer and now we're at 100 200 but let's move back here and then again you can middle click with the y to move up and down this is the z direction so if you want to move in this axis here you can click over you can middle click again and there we are 
So if we select a region, I just want this area here. It will then tell you what coordinates you've selected from. So these are the lower three coordinates, X, Y, and Z, and then these are the upper coordinates. And then to export again, all this stuff that you want, uh, you can say a structure name. Also, if you want to add your own biome presets, so if you have a structure that you want to generate in like a certain few biomes, you can open up this JSON biome presets local file here. And once you've opened it, if we just close the program again, there we are. You can then add in your own preset by just copying this basic one, put a comma and paste it. It's just JSON formatting. So if you know how to do that, it'll help. And we're going to change this to custom biomes. There we are. And now for stuff added to the whitelist, you just type it in here. So if we wanted to spawn in, say, some dragons biome, and we don't want it to spawn in, I don't know, the potato biome, then you just do that. So we'll add it to the whitelist of dragons and move potato, put it into the blacklist. So now if you were to run the program again, this these presets we just added will show up so once it loads there we are and we select our world load the world into the region select the region doesn't matter where and then you can see over here it didn't actually add it into the thing Why did you not work? Okay, so I did actually add it. I just didn't see it the first time. Uh, our preset is here, custom biomes. If we press add preset, you can then see it adds in the dragons to the spawnable and potato to the blacklisted. So that works, that's how you add your own custom biome things. And you can also add in your own actual custom biome. So if you were to add in dragon and potato here, you can then save this text document, local biomes list. And then you can close the program again because you've got to close it if you want to update a file. So now once the program loads, you will see. There we go. You select your world. Select a region, doesn't matter where. Again, and you can see over here, it added in the biomes that we added. So they're both here. So our custom ones show up here. You can't remove them now because they're added in through the file instead of here. So that's perfect. If we want, you can then add presets again, do all that stuff. Works fine. Anyway, thank you for watching. My name is Machine Builder. Don't forget to like and subscribe and also share the video if you found it useful or cool. Also, please do give credit because I've been seeing quite a few add-ons that use my structure generator and don't give credit. And it kind of annoys me because I put hours of work into it. Um, so yeah, if you're gonna use it, like at least give some credit and put a link to this video in the description or just like in the explanation of your add-on. But thank you for watching. Again, uh, if you want to, you can donate on PayPal. There will be a link in the description as well. Also, make sure to check out my website because that's where the download is. And it's a free download, but consider donating if you want to because I put a lot of time into this. But I'll see you in the next video. Bye.